let's check out our team composition. First up on the blue team, we have Imond coming from Pittsburgh, and he's going to be playing with Spartacus. Comes out with a nice firm salute. All right. <laughs> Next up, we have John coming from Dallas. He's going to be using the Black Knight. He's gonna, that's a great start off to a team right there. Right. As well as Andrew coming from Chicago, Midwest Brethren. Stand up. He's going to be using Rawlings. Smile on his face. He's ready for action. I like it. And then, of course, we have another Chicago native, Momo, using Alona. Momo alone. I don't know why it's just dope to me. <laughs> and the coach, Beeler, will be leading these guys to victory, giving them the shout outs, the ones and twos. Look at the fedora on that man. I always forget <laughs> to compliment his style because I would definitely wear that fedora. He needs a hashtag. We're going to call it hashtag fedora fresh. <laughs> fedora fresh. Oh, fedora fresh. Fedora That's what your fresh. name should be. We <laughs> just helped you out. Let's see what the red team is looking like. All right, coming up first, coming out of England, it's going to be Skirm. Hopefully, I said that right. Represented with Spartacus. Oh no, this is gonna I, I, this is gonna be interesting. Coming up next is gonna be Mac and Jeeves from DC, also representing Spartacus. He looks like a Mac and Jeeves kind of guy, and I, <laughs> I, I have to give commend him on that name choice. Number three is gonna be Joey P, also coming out of England, and he's gonna be representing Spartacus. Okay, all right. <laughs> and the last but not least, it's gonna be Spotless from Lancaster, representing. Oh wow. Spartacus! From the other side of the pond, huh? All right, okay, All right. that's what I like to see. Nice, nice global representation, international representation playing breakaway here with you guys at TwitchCon 2016. You know, I'm curious to see how the coach, Otterhead, okay. has directed them. Come on now. <laughs> he's smiling, too. He's like, he's got something for you guys. So I'm excited to see. <laughs> you know, in breakaway, we don't have any restrictions, especially here at the booth. If you want to pick multiple characters of the same type, this is true. you can do that. So... We have yet to see an all one character team. There's no, there's, this, this is pure DPS. Yes. There's no tanks. There's no rushdown. I mean, excuse me, this is all rushdown. That's <laughs> really weird. First off, to me, for them to run a full Spartacus team. Yeah. And, and th look at look what's on the other team. A Spartacus, a Black Knight, a Rollins, and then an Alona. Right. I feel like the team with the Alona versus four Spartacus, it shouldn't be too hard, but I feel like it's going to be harder to deal with for Alona herself than the team as a whole. Absolutely. Again, see, I don't think that a full Spartacus team is out of the race simply because of a few things. First off, this is a glass cannon team. Let's be honest for a second. Health-wise, not too much on health, but does a lot of damage, and it can definitely keep you a hit stun for a while. Right. It's like a swarm coming. This is a Zerg rush that's about to happen. Okay. It's absolutely insane. Also, let's not forget mobility. They have a lot of that's that. True. And don't forget the buildable. They have the ramps. This might be a ramp-happy field here, and it could be absolutely dangerous. They can get everywhere fast. And again, the buys that they actually have can determine what roles each Spartacus plays. This is going to be an in insane scramble, and I'm excited to get this match underway as we kick off El Dorado. Let's see what happens. And like you said, an all Spartacus team, I don't believe we've once, even with no. us playing this game, we have not once seen an all Spartacus team. But, you know, it gives some weight to the fidelity of the team because right. they're on the stage. So that means they've already played and beat someone else. Right. And they're all mirror, they're mirroring their bias, too. They actually opt for armor. Yep, all, all armor. That's Man, that's really smart. And then you see armor piercing for blue Spartacus, and then you see defense for for blue team's Black Knight. Oh, and it's just like I said, this is exactly what I was expecting. Again, this is gonna be a very- and look at this, look how much damage the all Spartacus team has lost, and they're down one Spartacus already. Yes, they are, We're but We're gonna call again, this Team 300. This is what this team is. Team 300, I like team that. Team 300. And this again, like I said before, wow. this team is gonna be very dash happy. Again, the buildables that they have on deck collectively are gonna be those ramps. They can put at least four down per round. Oh, wow. I never even thought about that. Oh, wow. And if you don't destroy those buildables, it's going to be ramps galore. These guys are going to be in turbo mode the entire time. Can you catch them? How do you play defense to that? Right now, we don't have any walls because there's no Thorgrim. Spikes might be helpful. And they're, but other than they're that, what are they going to do? all the same buffs, it looks like. That is crazy. Right. So defense and life and then just raw defense. And you see Alona with uh, speed up, destruction on buildables and health as well. Rawlings with strength and... Life. And look how fast the Spartacuses are out on the map. Wow. That's just like that. This They're is, out again in the past. And that's it. These guys are playing this like it's a, a initial just a sports game. Right. They're moving this the relic football. down the field so quick. This is football. You know what? I feel like they're cheating. Point coming. <laughs> Wait. Now this is starting to make sense. They're playing this like it's a soccer game right, right now. Moving the relic down the field. Right. S1. Using those ramps. 
pushing that relic so fast. They're not even giving him time to react at this point. And with them having a Black Knight on the team, how are they even going to stop? That's actually pretty scary to deal yeah, with. Absolutely. The more that I think about this, this is really hard to deal with. Right. And again, and, and, and just because of that pick, how do you maintain control? Do you even lead the base? You can't go for buffs. You may want to push the relic, but they can get down there so fast. Like, two seconds on the clock. They're already there. Just like what that, they're in the What is happening zone. right now? And now you see the defense come into play. You see that other Spartacus come up from the red team, and there's another Spartacus just moves right into the into the zone and starts working on some of those buildables. Now we have a blue Spartacus going over. Needs to be careful. It's a jail cell right there. Nice. Gets past it. Red team Spartacus tries to pick up that relic. All right, and I do like the play. Again, blue team's going to have the slow play here because of the Spartacus. But once again, this oh. is a very glass cannon team. These guys have a lot of burst DPS, and they know that they have to build their armor in order to stay in the fight. Uh -oh. But they sacrifice damage when they build their armor. And it looks like the blue team oh, might score wow. here. And didn't use that invisible dash. That's one of the options you get when you have the relic in hand. You get there you go. You see that, that blue team's black knight use its invisible dash while holding the relic. Wow, great clip there. And these guys are very smart. They're gonna go for all of the kills that they can get. They know that there's nobody to heal them. They know that they're very squishy. This is an opportunity for them to score. All they have to do is stay together. And actually, they're doing a smart job by getting rid of those buildables. Nice push right now. And you see that now, now we have a point. Now we have a game. We have a match, yes. So one small adjustment was made, but let's keep in mind again, when it comes to map awareness and advantage, those four Spartacus definitely established control because they have actually forced the blue team to wait it out in that base, which means the whole rest of the field is to their disposal. They can get the buffs if they want. Yep. Both of them. They can touch the relic first. They can build first. They can establish position way faster than the other team. And this is a really dangerous composition, but again, they can still be eliminated here, as we do see I'm, the blue I'm team still, I'm still intrigued by the buys of the blue team at this point, but there you go. Now you see the blue team wising up. Right. And they're saying, you know what? We're going to cover our base in buildables, make you have to deal with these things. And I feel like it's still going to be a hard sell because they, I, don't, I don't see too many people actually stopping them from moving that relic down the field. And they are working with some great team cohesion right now. Absolutely. Now, these guys have put out some pretty solid buildables just to buy them a little bit more time. And in the meantime, they're going to try to clear out as many things as they can. That catapult is absolutely wonderful right now from the blue team. They need that more than anything, as well as that siege bear that you see rolling right now. That's going to clear out some of those ramps as well. That's actually pretty smart. Ramps still in play, not as much as before, but you see the blue team making those adjustments to stop them from making that advance. I'm very excited to see what these guys are doing. Shout out to the blue team for simply just slowing down that red team and those multiple Spartacus. It's very hard to engage, but they do have a Black Knight that's very tanky with an Alona. We're going to have to expect that composition this entire time if they want to beat this glass cannon team. This is ridiculous. The Team 300 right now doing so much damage in a short amount of time. And look at that Black Knight getting beat up by one of the Red Spartacus right now. And like I said before, as quick as they can deal damage, it can be dealt to them just like that. And they're going to have to retreat back to their own base. Keep in mind, not much is left on their base as well. Catapults are gone. Ramps are almost gone. And this is why this team is very dangerous. Oh, in the meantime, wow. And he just took out two of the Red Team Spartacus by himself. That Black Knight... So much defense. They ha that is something to think about. And like I said before, they have that support of Alona, and they're pushing deep into the red territory, really close to scoring that relic in the relay. Boom. And there it is. And I said that before. Boom. You have to deal with that Alona no matter what. Absolutely. It's harder for them to have to deal with that character because Black Knight's going to be like, I'm almost dead. Right. Alona, help me out. And that ult recovers very quick, too. Uh, That's a lot of health regained. On top of that, Spartacus does not have much to deal with that alt from Black Knight. Right. So if anything happens where he pops it, they have to make the option to slide out. And even if they do, they have Alona there to get the heal for the blue team. Man, right. we this is a game that I did not see coming. Right. And look at that net worth building up for the blue team. They have a lot in their favor. Now, the blue team has finally established a defense. They don't have to worry too much. They've got spikes available. They have jails available. You're not just going to rush into the blue base. You're going to get locked up at some point. So you have to be very careful if you're the red team. They have about 8,000 more spent on powering up their characters oh, on the yes. blue side. And this, this match just got a lot more even, it feels like. Right. So these guys are definitely going to have to move as a collective. If one gets caught out, they're going to be eliminated. And we see that on the red side. One Spartacus Look is down. Look how fast they took out that buildable right there. They saw him eyeing that ramp, and they was like, no, Absolutely. you're not going to move that relic down this way. And that's really sad, too, because... Red Team was banking on mobility to get themselves into the fight. And unfortunately, right now, oh, they're going to wow. have to fight it out. Nice play right here in the Red Team's goal. And you see Blue Team Spartacus trying to make that play to push that relic in. You see the Black Knight come it's, on, try to chuck it in. There's just too many at the base. There's it's over. It's right the toss. Now. 
tries to clear the relic, almost gets intercepted. You see Alona pop that ult, and there it is. You see them trying to clear that relic, and it doesn't seem like it's working out. Blue team, what a rally right now. They have a power play. It's 4v2, and this is what I was talking about. The long game goes in favor of that support. You have a Black Knight backing them up. You have Alona there as well. And, man, I can't say that wasn't a good game. No, that was great. that was an amazing game. That was game. great. That just shows the power of proper planning on both sides.